You are listening to the Marginalized Conflicts podcast series, a project of the Introduction to Peace and Conflict Studies course at Colgate University in fall 2008. As a collective, we selected present and past conflicts which we feel are marginalized, either in our own study of history and politics or in dominant narratives of both. We aim to inform, surprise, shock, and inspire. I am Catherine Clark, and today's podcast is about the Cambodian genocide and the continuing effects of war after conflict resolution. The way that I conceive this project and encourage students to think about this project much differently than a standard term paper has been in terms of its orientation towards a broader audience than only their instructor, than only me. Um, And the way that this has happened is that before they even thought about their topic that they wanted to cover in their podcast, before they wrote their script, certainly before they recorded, I asked them to listen to two or more podcasts. And the very first question that they were supposed to think about is, who is the audience of this podcast? So the the podcast project replaced a longer research paper project in the course. The course is an introductory level course. And so I tried to figure out how I could make the podcast sort of a similar amount of work to a research paper. And I think it's been more work for the students. Um, And one thing I would change is actually add even more to it. In terms of what they've done for the podcast, they've, of course, written the script and recorded and edited their own podcast. They listened to and wrote two reviews of podcasts out in the world. Um, They have also been listening to three of their peers' podcasts and writing one paragraph long responses to them that they share with the author of the podcast and with me. I would also add peer review of scripts. The way that I did it is that I read and commented on all of their scripts and I read them both for cogency and awkwardness and tried to encourage those who it seemed had not read theirs out loud yet to read them out loud. But I think that if if I was going to do it again, I would try and find some way to make that process a peer review process because I think they would actually learn a lot from, from reviewing someone else's script and it would help them as they wrote their own scripts. It seems like what's important about the podcast process is taking something and making it accessible to a broader audience. And in terms of thinking about what kind of assignment might lend itself to a podcast, I do think almost any topic in any field with a little bit of extra thought could work in the sense that I think the reason why the marginalized conflicts topic worked is that built into the idea of marginalized conflicts is something that needs to be heard. I think that having a piece of analysis or information that needs to have a broader audience can be found in any number of places. And I think that's where passion comes in also. Um, I think I see in the peace and conflict studies field, I meet a lot of students who are very passionate, but I've also taught in anthropology, I've taught in Southeast Asian studies, and I see passionate students there as well. What drives their passion is something different. It's not necessarily a desire to change the world, but it's a compelling desire to know and understand something so completely and so fully that you know they, like, they don't want to sleep at night because they want to think about whatever it is. And I think in that sense, if one can figure out how to inspire that in students, then anything can be a compelling podcast. If they if students can figure out how to share that passion with someone else. There's always a subgroup of students who come to the course already incredibly engaged in the topics with which we're discussing and others who become inspired throughout the course. So one sees some amount of passion develop in students and people, students get excited about writing a term paper about something that they care about. In this particular project, I think the reason why students became more engaged and many of them became more passionate is because they were speaking to an outside audience. There's only so much passion one can drum up when you know that you're only one person is going to read your paper. But with their podcast, they knew that other people would listen to them. Um, they knew their friends would listen to them. They knew their families would listen to them. They know that anyone who might come across our podcast series on iTunes might listen to it. I think they became very excited about the possibility of that happening. Um, And I also think that, or I suspect, and I don't know how to confirm this, but that through the process of trying to write a script that would engage other people, 
some of them became engaged themselves through that process because they realized why a particular issue was important. I encourage you to write to your congressmen and other representatives to push your country to take a step in the right direction. Imagine a world where children, mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers didn't have to worry about taking a wrong step. To learn more about what you can do to make this vision a reality, please visit hrw.org slash landmines or www.veteransforamerica.org slash r dash programs slash landmind. Thank you. This series is made possible by a collaboration among Clarence Maybe, Ray Nardelli, Rich Grant, Terrell Habercorn, the student audio assistants, and the members of Introduction to Peace and Conflict Studies at Colgate University. The music is provided by Poddington Bear. Thank you very much.